Hi, I'm Cliff, N4CCB. In this video, we're going to talk about how to build a portable hex beam antenna. Now, a hex beam antenna is a directional antenna. It's a dipole and a reflected element, just like any two element uh, beam antenna. But because of the way it's designed with the six spreaders coming out from a center hub, the, the, the footprint is smaller. Uh, Mike Traffy, N1HXA, invented the hex beam back in the early 1990s. And in 2007, Steve Hunt, G3TXQ, refined that. And that's the design that we all tend to see today. He calls it the broadband hex beam. Um, it's a great antenna. A lot of people have them at home. They have a multi-band hex beam where you have wire kits that are kind of you know, stacked up on the spreaders that are bent. This particular one that I built, the spreaders just lay horizontal and the wire kit you know, goes around it without them uh, being under stress. So, well, let's take a look at how to build that. The heart of a hex beam is a center hub. That's where the mast attaches, that's where the spreaders attach, and that's where your feed line has to attach so that you can get the, the, you know, the signal to your wire kit. Um, my friend Doug Miller, W4DML, built some hex beam hubs, and I bought this from him. He's got other ones to sell. Uh, drop me a line uh, if you want me to forward you know, something to Doug in case you're interested in one of these. Uh, it's a solid, a, a solid nylon that he milled out. Uh, the opening here perfectly fits my telescopic mast. He's got one just like it, so he knew how big it needed to be, and I knew it would fit mine. Uh, he's got aluminum poles here that bolt, uh, you know, screw into the nylon. He's got some uh, washer, uh, you know, water tubing here that he's glued, so it makes a nice friction fit for the spreaders. Um, now, you don't have to buy one of these. You can make one, and actually, before I bought this from Doug, I was going to make one. I've got it mocked up on the computer. I'll show you how I was going to do it. Okay, so what you're seeing is an overhead view. Uh, you can see the six spreaders here. That's what those black things are. The white square is a, a cutting board, so a polyethylene, a plastic cutting board like you'd buy at any, you know, any store for your kitchen. Uh, the spreaders are attached to that cutting board with a couple of U-bolts. On the back side of this, there'd be uh, uh, you know, wing nuts so that you could tighten those uh, spreaders, tighten the U-bolts down on the spreaders in the field without having to have tools. Um, I'm going to tilt this a little bit and rotate it around a little bit so you can kind of see it better. Uh, the things in red here are just red for the sake of conversation. It would really be like angled aluminum, you know, a little piece of aluminum with a 90 degree angle. Uh, the aluminum would be bolted to the cutting board and then it would go up the side of the mast and be attached to a white uh, PVC cap. So the weight of this antenna top is actually borne by this PVC cap up here. Uh, what you're seeing, uh, this, this gray thing around it, would be a hose clamp. And you'd want to have some way for these right angle pieces to friction fit up against the mast so that down at the bottom of the mast, you could just turn the base of the mast and uh, it would turn the antenna up here at the top. So something has to keep this pressed up against the mast so it doesn't just you know, spin in, in space for you. So that's how I was going to build it. That's how I really do think that somebody could build one. And uh, there's probably a million ways to skin that cat, but that's what I was going to do. Okay, so to attach the uh, wire kit to the hub, I've 3D printed this little piece here. You don't have to 3D print it, you can do whatever you want to do. But I've got this and it fits right here. And now it's got wing nuts. You can see I made a little uh, pigtail here. Uh, and I put a uh, barrel connector so that I can just connect my external coax to this. I've got wing nuts here so that the uh, wire kit uh, can easily attach to it. And I'll show you a close up of that so you can see that a little better on, on camera. So you got the spreaders, which by the way, here's one of those. This is a 13 foot fishing pole made by Shakespeare. It's a wonder pole. I think it was about $12 on Amazon. But it's just truly a fishing pole. There's a little eyelet at the end. And this thing you know, extends and friction locks. And it's 13 feet long by the time you're done. And you need six of these, of course. Well, how does the wire kit stay on these spreaders at the right place? Well, Doug, when he deploys his, he runs the wire through the eyelets and just lets the, uh, you know, lets the spreaders bend. 
And to be more stable, he deploys his upside down so that the wire kit's actually hanging a few feet below the top of the mast for stability's sake. You can imagine with an upside down you know, umbrella like that, you could hold it on with one finger, but if you flip it on the other side, the center of gravity is not good, so it's more topsy-turvy. I decided to deploy mine with the spreaders just laying horizontal, and the wire kit you know, goes around it horizontally. So what I did, uh, you can certainly just use electrical tape and just you know, tape it at the right spot uh, when you deploy it. But uh, I 3D printed these little things, and what these are, they slide down the antenna and they stop at the exact right spot. So I knew where the right spot was, I measured it, I used calipers to see what the diameter was, and then I 3D printed these, and it just slips down the pole and it stops where, where I need it to stop. And then as I, as I deploy this, I just take the wire kit and walk around the antenna and then put the wire, you know, right on the, this. And there's several catches here so I can adjust the tension as I want. But that's how I solved that problem. And again, that's kind of a high-tech solution that is unnecessary. Um, you got to have a mast. I have a telescopic fiberglass mast. There's no reason why you couldn't hoist this up into a tree. But remember, it's like 13 feet uh, on each side of the hub. So you'd have to have a tree that has a branch that gives you 13 feet between the trunk and this and then it's going to just spin freely in space and you don't want that so you have to have at least one rope if not two to kind of stake it down to stabilize it to point it in the direction you want so the mast for me uh, works a lot better and that's what I chose to do because it's top heavy even though it's lightweight uh, you need to guide that antenna you don't want it to be flopping around in the breeze uh, so I've got some uh, guy rings and I 3D printed these but I didn't need to because DX Engineering uh, has a great set of five guy rings for ten, well, nine dollars, I think. Uh, they're really good. I recommend those. Uh, but you'll need, you know, at least three ropes, two levels of guying, in my opinion. Mine's deployed at 26 feet, and I really felt comfortable with two levels of guying. You could probably get by with one, maybe, but uh, I didn't want to take that chance. So you got to have, you know, ropes coming down from that. You're going to have to have stakes in the ground. Uh, you don't want lightweight, super, super lightweight uh, aluminum tent stakes for something like this. You need a little heavier duty stakes. And because of that, you're going to need some kind of mallet to drive the stakes in. Um, if you've got two people, one person can hold the mast while you're doing the antenna stuff. If you don't have two people, if you're doing it by yourself, you need some kind of base. I've got a steel drive-on base that I use a lot, and I can use that when I'm by myself. Uh, here uh, in the video you're going to see I used my friend's heavy duty tripod to deploy it but really the base works well and that's what I would do deploy it by myself alright so that's a lot of commitment right unlike a simple dipole where you just get it up in a tree and you're on the air here you got about 15 minutes of setup and you gotta have with you the hub six spreaders the wire kit uh, guy ropes guy rings stakes mallet and a base if you're not having somebody help you so uh, you have to decide whether or not this is worth it uh, it's definitely a great antenna, but given that you get 4.4 dB of gain, that's less than one S unit. Now, of course, you know, you're, you're hearing less stations on the side and the rear, so there are some other benefits as well as just the gain. Uh, but this is definitely an antenna that you'd want to use if you're trying to get a great signal out while working portable. Um, but it, you know, it, it does take some effort. As far as building it, it's not hard to build, it's just kind of tedious. Um, there's nothing particularly difficult about this, but it does require a little ingenuity and, uh, and some effort. And for many of you, it just won't be worth it. Uh, but because I'm weird and I like to play with this kind of stuff, you know, I, it was something I wanted to do and I'm glad I did. What else should I tell you about this? Um, I guess nothing. Let me just go to the video and we'll look at uh, some, uh, some clips of where I deployed mine. So here's the antenna deployed. You know, it's got a pretty big, uh, impressive look to it. It's about uh, 26 feet across, and somebody who's just watching from a distance is going to think that you know what you're doing uh, when they see this uh, monster. Here are the heavy-duty stakes, and uh, there's the hammer I'm using to drive those in. There's the tensioners and the two levels of guying. And uh, it's a real neat antenna. There's the orange spreader you know, pieces that you can see the wire kit around. Here's the antenna close to the ground. You can see a little bit better. Um, it's sitting in this uh, tripod base. And there are the guy rings right there with ropes attached to them. 
This is my uh, thin wall telescopic mast. Really does a pretty good job. And going up here, you can see the uh, the place where the feed line you know connects to the antenna and the antenna kit. There's the wing nuts that are attached. Uh, you see the wire kits uh, attached to some 3D printed strain relief, and uh, the lugs that go into the wing nuts and extend out. That uh, what you're seeing right there are the radiating elements of it. Um, and then the reflector, of course, is on the back side of the antenna. This is the forward side that you're looking at right here. Uh, here, I'm holding the center hub in my hand. It's balanced on one finger. So you can see that it's very lightweight, and it really needs to be because it's up at height. Uh, that piece of electrical tape, by the way, on the hub is so that that uh, feed point is, fits a little more snugly on that. Um, but you can see how the, the wire kit's attached to the wing nuts there and the little pigtail hanging down where the coax attaches. But uh, anyway, uh, make sure you build this light. If you build one yourself, make sure the hub is as light as you can make it. Here's the 20 meter wire kit. It's uh, on a wire winder, so it's very compact. The whole thing is like one continuous piece of something or other. So you can just attach uh, one side of the driven element to one of the wing nuts at the center hub and then walk around the antenna, uh, stretching the, the wire around those uh, orange 3D printed uh, you know, spreader doodads. Uh, so it's really compact and really easy uh, to deploy. Here are some little uh, guy rope tensioners. I 3D printed these. You can buy these at any camping store. Uh, you know they're used to uh, adjust the tension on uh, guy ropes. You know to hold up a tent. So, uh, but it really comes in handy for this purpose, and you really need to use these. Okay, so I hope these clips kind of help make sense of all this. Now, if you want to build your own hex beam. There's a website that you really need to go to, and that is www.hex-beam.com. That website has everything you need to know about how to cut the wires and, and make the wire kits uh, and the spacing you know, between the driven element and the reflector and so on. So everything you need to know is right there. And uh, if this kind of antenna speaks to you, if you like getting your hands dirty and, and building something like this, that's a great website to check out. Also, uh, you can purchase the K4KIO antenna, which is uh, you know, one that that company makes. That's the G3TXQ antenna. Uh, really high quality build of that antenna. So uh, anyway, I guess that's about it. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, talk to you later.